I'm not a professional photographer, but I am learning how to fake it. Stay tuned for my three must-haves, three inexpensive add-ons, and the free software I use for all my product photos. Hey there, my crafty friends. If you're thinking about selling your handmade items, then you probably need some professional looking photographs. And if you're like me, that can seem a little bit daunting. But there are some inexpensive ways to get started that produce some pretty good results. Welcome to the Upcycle Design Lab. If we haven't met before, my name's Cindy and I craft using recycled and repurposed materials. You could say I'm thrifty to a fault. I record my videos and take all my photographs with my cell phone that's almost three years old. So if I can make my photographs look decent, I'm pretty sure you can too. Recently, I applied for my first craft show and as part of the application, I needed to submit photographs of my work. So I obviously wanted the pictures to look as good as possible. And if you're selling items uh, online, you also need to have some good quality photographs of your products. Now, I've always struggled with taking photos of my products, whether it's the staging, the lighting, the angles, or the editing. Um, and I'm honestly not very good at any of it, but I have gotten a lot better. And when I was doing this craft show application, I did consider hiring a professional photographer, but it didn't take me very long to figure out that that just wasn't in my budget. So these are all of the items that I sent in uh, with my craft show application and they're all made using tin cans. So I have these little wall hangers that can be used for a small, as a small vase or to propagate your plants in and they're made with fence post and metal or tin cans. Then I've got some accent mirrors, Christmas tree ornaments, a silly little tin can purse, a lot of different jewelry or earring styles, and this snowman bobblehead. And by the way, if you're interested in any of these craft tutorials, I will link to those in the description box of this video. But I just wanted to show you the variety of sizes that I had to photograph before I take you down and show you my little photo studio. So the three must-have things you need are pretty obvious. You need a camera, a solid color backdrop, and good lighting. And as I mentioned, I use my cell phone for my camera, and I'm assuming that you have access to some sort of digital photography equipment. Now I know I'm not telling you anything earth shattering, and you probably already know this stuff, but I know that I have a tendency to complicate things. For example, I used to try to stage my photos, either by trying to show the item in use, or as it would look if it were displayed, so I would have taken this bobblehead snowman and put it on my mantle with some other Christmas decorations. But you don't need to go to all that trouble for product photos, and I was never very successful when I tried doing it that way. So having a solid color background just keeps it all much simpler. And the backdrop I'm using is just a plastic tablecloth from the Dollar Tree, which works perfectly fine for my skill level. I have tried using different color backdrops, but white is hands down the easiest for me to use. As for the lighting, you can see I have a mismatched set of three lights, one on each side and one overhead, but I don't use any diffusers or reflectors. The one thing I do make sure I have are daylight bulbs in all of my lights. You can also use natural lighting, but I think it's a little tricky for product photography. I do use natural light often for my videos, but for product photos, I prefer to use the daylight bulbs for a more controlled light setting. In this photo, you can see I have three different light bulbs in my crazy little lamp here. On the far right, I have what's called a bright white bulb. In the middle is a soft white bulb. And on the left is the daylight bulb. And they're all 100 watts, so it's a pretty even comparison. But what you can see is on the white backdrop, behind the soft white and the bright white, the backdrop is quite yellow. And if you look behind the daylight bulb, you can see that the backdrop is very white and true to color, which is why you want to make sure that you have daylight bulbs. 
So three things you might choose to add on are a tripod, lighting kit, and a light box. And there are a lot of choices for all of these items in varying price ranges. I have some of the lower end items and they work very well for my purposes. I have this Sunpack 585 tripod and it's lightweight and compact and it adjusts up to 58 inches so it's very versatile for under $30. If you're using your phone for your pho photographs you're also going to want a phone mount for your tripod and this one came with my tripod but I wouldn't recommend it. It's kind of got a spring load to it and it's pretty hard on the phone. The little pad came off of it so the phone would slip out and fall on the ground and um, it was also kind of wobbly because this spring or this screw was the only thing holding it and so it would kind of wobble back and forth like that. So I upgraded to this new clamp which has a release on it. It was a little bit more expensive but it just screws right onto the existing tripod and I'm much happier with it. It's a much more stable clamp which is the whole point of having a tripod in the first place. I purchased my light kit several years ago. I think it was around between 40 and 60 dollars and it's just been a useful tool to have when I need extra lighting in a large area. So I use my light kit more for video than for product photography, but on occasion when I'm photographing large items like furniture, the extra light is very helpful. So my last little inexpensive add-on is a great thing if you're doing a lot of small photography. They, these come in different sizes, but this is the small light box. And one of my favorite things about it is that it is collapsible and very easy to store. It's very easy to use. It has its own little LED lights that plug into a USB connector or your computer. And it has several different colors of backdrops that come with it as well. So if you're doing any small uh, items, it definitely makes your photographs a much, much better just to have this inexpensive item to photograph your items in. If you're just getting started photographing your handmade items, you'll also need some editing software. And if you aren't familiar with photo editing software, it can probably seem a little bit overwhelming. But you really only need to learn a few of the tools to get started. And you can choose from several different free software options. I'll put a link in the description box to an article I found that talks about the best free photo editing software for 2021. So you can check it out and decide which is the best software for you. Hey, if you feel like you're getting some good information here, please hit the like button and share this video if you know someone you think it might help. So the software I use is called Paint, but it really doesn't matter if you choose a different software, they all do pretty much the same thing. And there are just six adjustments that you need to learn to get started with your photo editing. Of course, any software you choose will do a lot more than just these six things, but you can learn more as you go. So the six adjustments that I think you should start with are cropping, rotating, adjusting the brightness, adjusting the hue and saturation, using the eraser tool, and using the magic wand tool, selection tool. You should be able to find tutorials pretty easily for any of the software that you choose. So learning these six editing features shouldn't be too difficult. And if you're interested in learning more about paint, let me know in the comments. Now I know you're probably wondering what my photos actually look like. And I'm not suggesting that they look like they were taken by a professional photographer. But I do think I was able to get some good representations of my work. Let me know what you think in the comments. And if you'd like to see more upcycled craft ideas or find out more about my first craft show experience, be sure to subscribe and click the bell icon to select how you'd like to be notified when I upload new videos. Thanks so much for watching. I hope to see you back here soon in the lab.